How are you guys doing today? It's Jake from the Fourth Liners Podcast, and I'm here with Bryce here, and this video has been waiting for a while, but perfect time to do it right before the draft. It's tomorrow, if uh, you'll probably be watching this tomorrow. Um, we're doing the draft predictions for the 2022 NHL entry draft in Montreal. And you know what? Me and Bryce are like, we're not, obviously not Bob McKenzie, but we're definitely gonna give you our predictions of like where we think guys are gonna slot. We're gonna do the top 15. I think if we did 30, this would be a long, long ass video. But 16, right? Because 32 teams now? I guess we'll do 16. All right, sounds good to me. Um, one wait, wait, who, no, 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 who, who, 16 teams missed the playoffs, right? Yeah, 16 teams, yeah. Missed the playoffs, so then, it makes yeah, sense. so 16 yeah. teams are lottery, lottery, lottery. Okay, we'll do 16. Um, one more, yeah. one more doesn't hurt. But we can get into it here. Um, we're not wasting any more time. But like I said, we're not, we're no Bob McKenzie's here. We're just kind of like uh, some basic hockey guys trying to predict here. But we just have, we have some kind of an idea of like who's going to go where. Um, but slotting for maybe Bryce, well, like I know I like maybe know more of the prospects than you do <clears throat> or know more about them. So you can definitely like. I'll say my prediction, then you can say if you could agree or not or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, you you you've done you've done a lot more studying than me. I will provide some input if I have some knowledge about the prospect or uh, you know what I think maybe team needs are. If, yep. if if a team maybe is picking positionally, even though that's not as common in the NHL as other sports. But um, but yeah, I mean I think I think you should say who you think uh, you know the number one is taking, and then I'll uh, I'll you know. All right. What? I'll talk after. Sounds good. Okay, we'll get into it here. We're going to go to Montreal with the first overall pick, which I think is going to be great for them. And I'm going to be like Bob McKenzie here. I'm going to go off like what everyone else is saying. Or not, I'm going to go different than what everyone else is saying. And I'm putting Slavowski as number one for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, now, is that think who is that who you think they should take or who you think they will take? I, I think... They might take it. Let's say that. I, I think know. they might take them. No. You don't no think way. it? No way. Okay. No, I don't think. I don't think they're in. They're in Montreal. Everybody, you know, the, the the general person, you know, maybe people who aren't that deep into hockey, but like still like it. I think everybody kind of thinks or knows that Shane Wright's the number one, even though like Slavkovsky's made a case, obviously, to be number one. Um. I, I think if Montreal doesn't take Shane Wright, they get booed. And I don't think the new GM is going to want that. Honestly, I think, like, I, I see what you're saying. Because, like, <clears throat> obviously, they like, Montreal is very big on the Canadian players, right? And Shane Wright's definitely been that guy that's been that exceptional status in the OHL. And, you know, he's been pretty much amazing his whole career. But he has been struggling. And I mean, COVID has been not generous to the OHL where they haven't played as many games as other leagues. But Slavoski, what the, I do like about him for Montreal is like a big guy that can play with like the small forwards like Caulfield and Suzuki, right? They're not big guys there, right? So he can definitely be a bigger guy and actually slot into the team <clears throat> and actually play for them, right? The Now, now what, what position is Suzuki? He is, I think, naturally a right wing. He he he's center right wing. Uh, he's like a in between. Okay. Yeah, center right wing for Suzuki. Okay, and 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 then and then Caulfield's what? Uh, he's a, he's, he's, also, a, he's uh, a right wing. Okay, so yeah, Slavkowski fits. Right. So like, I mean, he, he fits. That could be your top line right there. You know what I mean? He does fit, but but I just I just can't see like Shane Wright is even though he's not ranked number one on on a fair few now amount of of, of scouts. I still think he's the consensus number one, and and here's the risk, right? If if this new GM takes Shane Wright first overall, and Shane Wright doesn't pan out, I, I don't think he can be blamed because I think 99% of the GMs would take Shane Wright first. Yeah. Oh. If he yeah. takes Slavkovsky, and the scouts are wrong, and and Shane Wright ends up being, you know, uh, like I don't I don't Shane Wright's not on the same tier as like. <clears throat> Obviously not a McDavid or a Matthews, and I don't even know if he's on the same tier as like a Stamkos. I want to say I still like, think he's like I, I kind of want to say he's like um, like a Nico Heischer, you know? Like I think he's better. He's a little better than Nico Heischer, but you know what I'm trying to say? Like that first, like he, yeah. he's a first overall pick, but he's not. Is he better than Nugent Hopkins? 
Yes. Yes, I think he's better. Do you think Shane Wright's better than Nugent Hopkins? For sure. Do you think Shane Wright? Do you think Shane Wright is better than than a Taylor Hall? No. Uh that's tough to say. He might be. Maybe similar. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, they're both pretty good players. Similar. Yeah. But I think Taylor Hall has been underwhelming. I mean, like it's tough to say. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think Shane Wright Except does flashes. have a lot of p- potential. It's just you, you gotta really grow him in the right ways. You know what I mean? And play him with the right players. Yeah. So I I think I think I think Shane Wright goes number one. I okay. I do. And I think I think. <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, you know, they, it, it's a it's a lot easier to find a left winger, a scoring left winger, than like a bona fide number one center. center yeah. And I think Shane Wright could be that guy. Okay. But like, you know, the scouts are saying Slavkovsky is. I think Slavkovsky's a better fit for New Jersey than he is for Montreal. But for sure. Yeah. You know. Um. But yeah. So like, um, I I, I like to like the. Like, like, like Bob McKenzie, I feel like his list is pretty accurate every time. But, like, at the same time, I'm surprised he put Slavoski. But, honestly, I kind of agree with it. So, like, we, we, we can do... Like, that, that's a little controversial for, a, like, me and you there. But, like, we'll, we'll see who's right there. Um, well, I'll, I'll definitely put it on the screen here that I, I put uh, Slavoski and you pick Shane Wright for first overall pick there. But let's move on to number two. Yeah. Um, so, I do have Shane Wright going number two. To the New Jersey right, Devils. so I'll have I'll have Slavkowski going number two. Okay, to New Jersey. Just swap it right there. And I and I think I think there's been a lot of rumors with New Jersey potentially moving this pick. Yeah. But I think now with Slavkowski being rated as number one by so many scouts, I think New Jersey is going to think to themselves, well, it's a win-win for them because if Montreal takes Shane Wright, then they get a guy who is debatably the number one, debatably. Yep. Or if Montreal, you know, takes that crazy, insane chance, then New Jersey will get Shane Wright. You know, so, I don't think New Jersey wants to move on from that. No, and they're gonna They're in a good situation either way. Like a trade, yeah. Shane Wright or Slavowski, either way they're winning. Like they, they can't do anything wrong. I mean, maybe in the future we'll find that out. But like right now they can do whatever they want and it'd be the right move for them. Honestly, because they do have, they do have a lot of centermen, right? Like I understand that. But you can also put Jack Hughes on the right wing, right? Which uh, I think he yeah, already he has played on the right wing. Yeah. So like adding Shane Wright that might be a, a you know a step towards the playoffs there for them. You know what I mean? Or maybe in the future. But then Slavkovsky <clears throat> would fit perfectly, I think, with with yeah the Devils. He right? could too. Yeah. Like either 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 way, if it goes, I think Slavkovsky is a good for either yeah. team. You know what I mean? Or they trade the pick for Debrinket, who's yeah. ready now, and then, who can score then, 40 goals. Then he goes to, you know, Chicago, either or. The, they, you know, that team can use a, a pick as well, right? Like, they can use a nice prospect. I think yep. that's what they're going for. Um, but, yeah. Yep. Okay, well, I'll put that on the screen there. Um, so, the third overall pick goes to the Arizona Coyotes, the Cheaters in the NHL. They finally oh, got the Cheaters. They finally got a top five pick again. Um, but I think, I, like, we're going to go. I'm gonna, this is the, the pick that everyone's picking is Logan Cooley. Um, I've, cool. I've heard nothing but good things about this guy. He has 75 points in 51 games played this season. Um, he's playing for the U.S. National U18 team, the, for the U.S. Na- na- national Development Program. Um, it's hard to miss with those guys lately. And the, oh, any man. any U.S. Development Program guys going in the top 10, they're <laughs> they're they're hard to miss. Great talent. They're, they're really good. Great talent from that that program. I think Logan Cooley. Um, he's a centerman as well. Like that's the guy you can build your team around as well. I, I maybe like. I don't really know his game that much, but I've heard really good things about him, and it looks like he puts up a lot of points. And 75 points in 51 games played. Yeah, like that. I mean, obviously it's not the NHL, right? But at the same time, no, you are, you know, getting a. He's been high rated this whole time. I mean, maybe he's moved from like five to three or three to five. You know what yeah. I mean? But I think he's committed to uh, to University of Minnesota. Oh, so he's not going to be playing in the NHL next year. But that's okay. No shot. He's five ten, so yeah. he's a lot smaller. So he's probably a guy that can score a lot more, um, which is okay. Like that's been the trend in the NHL, right? Like a lot of a lot of the smaller guys have been taking higher. Like you see, Cole Coffee. He's a good weight for his height, though. Yeah, one eighty. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like he can definitely, he's gonna grow too. Like I don't think he's done growing. He did probably like I don't know what age people stop growing at. But um, I think he's a great pick, and especially for Arizona, where they are looking for picks again, um, I think they could definitely benefit from him. Okay, we'll go to number. I could, that, you know, that, sorry, you go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Say one more thing, but I was Cooley. just gonna say Logan Cooley could be a, a first line center, and that's something you know Arizona needs. Oh, for sure, definitely what they need. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, okay, we can go to number four here. It's the Seattle Kraken picking another top five pick here, and you know this is just adding to the core. Obviously, they're not gonna be a playoff team, um, but I think Simone Nemec, he's the gonna be the first defense selected in this draft. Um, apparently, he's and, and that's. <laughs> It tends to be a good move. It tends to be. Yes. I, I find that a lot of defensemen taking taking it four and five because teams obviously a lot of the time want to go for forwards first, right? But I think I think the first defenseman is usually like a massive, massive pick. Kill like you look at Makar, you look at Hedman, Dowdy. Like guys will take these these the, the first defenseman usually goes like three three or four. Yep. And like it's turned out to be a fantastic pick a lot of times, and and I mean to get that bona fide potential number one D, uh, D man on your team, I mean that's a big step for Seattle. Yeah, a lot of guys do have him like <clears throat> rated pretty high, um, but uh, like I I've only heard good things about this guy. I haven't heard anything. Is he right-handed? That'd be, if he is, he's, that's very valuable. Let me see that if he is. Nemec is. <clears throat> he is he is right-handed yeah, so that's yeah, very valuable that's, in the nhl right that's that's the pick <clears throat> and seattle i mean it doesn't really matter for them i feel like they just need to keep growing on the prospects like they have maddie veneers they yes. have um they're gonna have nemec I, th I forget the prospect pool for them um they, for death, they definitely have other guys that they you know are building that team towards and ron francis is gonna get a good pick there um i think Matt do you think there's a chance arizona takes <clears throat> nemec instead of Cooley? It could happen, but I think they should go with Cooley because I think they do, like, you think about Baron Hayden, he was good, but, like, he's not, you know, he's selected fourth overall, fourth or fifth overall, something like that, or third overall. I don't even remember. Somewhere along there, but I don't think he's, you know, lived up to that. Fourth. Yeah, not, he wasn't lived up to that, uh, you know, yeah. first line uh, center potential. Not they, yet, at they least. Need, they need that number one center. Yeah. They need it. Logan Cooley they can definitely it. be that guy, and I think he's going to be yeah. a star there. Um, I, I think... They can get someone for um, Chikrin if they need a defense. So, like, maybe they won't go for Nemec. You know what I mean? So, I think um, Simone Nemec definitely is going to go to Seattle. I think that's how it's going to play out there. Um, that could be a big pick. For sure. Um, okay, we go to number five here. I have a surprising pick here. I don't think a lot of people will agree with this, but I like this guy and I like how he plays. I don't know why. I just think I see him in the World Juniors and I think he's a very fast, like, big skilled player his name is Joaquim Kamel from uh the from Liga um he's a Finnish mm -hmm. player this guy is he's five foot nine 176 pounds um how many points it I think he's not a very like <clears throat> I, I mean it's it's hard to get a lot of points in like those type of leagues like they're, they're playing with men right so they're not going to get a lot of points and they don't play a lot of games like he has 39 he has 20 23 points in 39 games played and 15 that's goals. a lot of points exactly and he's a great player like uh, like people have him uh, uh slotted at number seven but i can see him bumping up to number five like just looking at the board yeah. here i just think it's philly right it is philly like i think uh, like adding a winger to philly i think it'd be a good idea like i i don't know and, and like i think he's gonna be a great player i think that that like the stuff like this is gonna happen i think this draft is pretty deep so i think you can you wouldn't go wrong with going with him and like like the guys ahead of him yeah they're really good like you got uh i don't know if you heard of his name uh cooter gautier um <clears throat> cutter gothier, cutter gothier. Yeah. yeah he he's pretty decent as well i can also see them going with him but i see joaquin kamel you know jumping up uh, at least i i think number five that could happen i don't know if uh you I mean, th th that. those are great points. No, those are great points to be getting with men. I mean, you don't really see that too often. Yeah. Why is he so low on this? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like 23 points in 39. Is he a little bit over age? Uh, that's a good question. He might be. How old is it? Might be 18. He might be 19. He is. He's 18. He's 18. So turned 18. I don't know. Recently. I think I think the guys so, ahead yeah. of him are pretty decent. But I, I have seen him been rated um, pretty high in the past. You know what I mean? I, it's not like he's always been uh, yeah. down there. So and that could be a big pick for Philly, man. That could be a sleeper pick there. Right. Even though it's you know going to be fifth overall, but I mean, 20, like I said, twenty-three points in thirty-nine games played with men. That's that's a big deal. Exactly. Exactly. Um. <clears throat> so do, do you agree with that? You agree with that pick? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's smart. Okay. It, it, it's just Philly, right? It's hard to read <clears throat> what they need. Exactly. Philly's a little old for the place I kind of want to say. Um, but they definitely yeah, they do are. have some young guys that, you know, they're, they're building their team around. That's a good winger to have. I think he can be a decent one. Especially the Finnish players are, are you know, coming up, you know, like they're actually making a name Do you think he could be themselves. ready to play now? I think so. If he's already playing in a league with men, I think that's that already prepares him to play in the like next season. And if he's putting yeah. up that amount of points in the Liga, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. We can go to number six here, and it's the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I know Cooter uh, got Cutter Cutter Cooter. Gart Gautier, um, he is like ranked. What a weird name. I know, <laughs> it's hard. To... Sorry, Cutter. Um, <clears throat> I know he's like r ranked like fifth overall for a lot of people, but I have them taking um, David Yurik. I think that's how you say his name. Yurich from Yurichek. Yurichek from Czechia. Um, and people are saying he's really good, and I don't think he'll drop even more. I think Columbus takes this guy because they do have a lot of you know. Um, forward prospects like with Cole Sillinger, he's he's coming up and doing amazing for them. I I mean they could go with uh, go, uh, Gautier. I mean it wouldn't be a bad pick, but I do think they take the defense because like I don't know if he's, he's a, another right-handed yeah, shot ex too. Exactly, it's a lot of value. Exactly, and they do they don't have Seth Jones anymore. They don't have what's his name. Uh, they have Zach Ransky as their only you know big defenseman there now, right? Like a lot of players left <clears throat> Columbus. And I think this is a guy that they can really benefit from. So I think they're definitely going to go with him. Um, so I, I don't think there's much to say about that. But uh, 11 I points. mean, Columbus, I think, is another team that, that like, I think I think they're going to take best player available. Yes. Uh, I don't <laughs> think they're going to draft positionally. Like, Cole Sillinger's looked really good. Yep. Um, I don't know who else they have that's young. They still have line A. Like, I don't know. Yep. But, like, drafting positionally, I don't think really factors in for Columbus. I think it's best player available. And I... I don't know if they're if you're looking for a defenseman, best player available, assuming Nemec is gone, Nemec is gone, um, then it, it, it's going to be your check for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think they <clears throat> they don't really go towards the American players. I, I I could be like generalizing that, but like I think they do like to go off the board, and they 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 tend to do that. You know, they did that with the Bo the ball, yeah. <clears throat> and um, you know, they he ended up being a good pick for them, right? And you know, but he was Canadian, but like. <clears throat> they're they're used to like not going with the the most obvious pick, right? So that's why I have yep. uh, Jerichek going number five with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Oh, number six, six sorry, with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Okay. Um, Where was I? But yeah, so I do have number seven, um, the Ottawa Senators here picking Cutter Gautier. I think the Senators like could use anyone really. I think their main t priority is getting Claude Giroux in the off season. So they're trying to. I God, guess, they're going to the be playoffs. loaded. They're yeah. so loaded on young talent. <laughs> exactly. So I don't think it hurts to add another forward to their core. Like they, they have Thomas Shabbat. I mean, they could add another deep defense with uh, Jerichek going down there if he does slot down to there. But I think Gautier would be even a really good pick to have on if the If Jerichek well. is available, if Jerichek is available, they take Jerichek. It's Right? Like Yeah. If he's not taking, if he's not taking <clears throat> number six, they definitely take him number seven. Like, I think that's the... Cause like you look right. under you look under that I think Jerichek's better than all the other players under that, for sure. Yeah. But I, I do if, yeah. if not I think if Gautier is still there they're like sure we're taking Gautier like I think Ottawa could also fun. afford to take a risk. They could afford to take a risk here because they they're just so loaded on young talent. Exactly. So exactly. So but like, I mean if a guy they, if they, a guy like they did Cutter, that last year. Yeah. Well, if your prediction is right and Cutter Gauthier slips then, I mean, that's a huge win, right? Like, Ottawa's gonna get another, like, like they're not picking in the top five, but they get a top five guy in Cutter? I mean, oh, yeah. that's so big, so. Right, exactly, and I think that'd be a steal for them. And I like to switch it up, like, it might not even happen. Go to might go number yeah. three, who knows? But like Cutter's I committed just, to Boston College for next season, by the way. So he's playing college. So a lot of these guys, he's, he's part of that US National U18 team, yeah. um, US uh, DP. But he has 65 points in 54 games, so he might go higher than like I have him rated. But like, it's just about how, what the team wants and the team's needs, so that he could slip. Like, you never know. Players do slip when you don't expect them to. I think with how valuable right-handed <clears throat> defensemen are right now, he definitely could slip. Yeah, exactly. Like, like guys like Jurchek, why would you want to pass up on him? I think you know Columbus can definitely benefit from him. So I do think yeah. Gautier could slip to number um, seven to the Ottawa Senators. Um, but then I have at number eight, it's the, you know, the Detroit Red Wings here. And 
you know, like their track record with drafting Finnish and Swedish players, I think that's what's their what they're used to doing. So I do have them picking. I'm sorry, I get a bunch of this guy's name. Lekaramaki. 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 Yeah, it's a it's a it's a tongue twister name, but apparently he's a pretty good forward, nice right. I'm not I'm not for sure on that, by the way. It's just when I when I read it, that's <coughs> how I say it in my head, and it sounds right. Lekaramaki. You know what? That's how it's gonna be for us. Um, yeah. But he is he is playing in the SHL. Uh, he, Nine points. He's 17 years old, so he's still a little younger. I mean, he's that's, at 04. That's big. That's yeah. big. Nine points as a 17 year old against men, and the SHL to me is like the third best league in the world. Exactly. So to have nine points in 26 games as a 17 year old in the third best league in the world. That's pretty big. Exactly, and I think a lot of people do have him rated number nine and number eight, and then there's one person that has him rated number six. So like he definitely will probably slot in this position. He's a good Swede. I think <clears throat> you know the Detroit Red, Red Wings could use another great Swede player. Like they have a lot of good Swedish players, especially in their past. And I think that's just. Yep. I know it's Steve Yeiserman now that's the, drafting the players, but I think he can definitely be a great aspect to that team. And uh, he screams he's, an Yeiserman pick to me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, he's he fits the Wed Red, Red Wings. Red Wings, uh, you know, he fits the Red Wings. Wed Wings, baby. He's the Wed Wing. <laughs> um, but um, I think that's definitely a good pick for them. I agree. And, and then we go to number nine with the Buffalo Sabers. So Buffalo needs help. Let's just be honest <laughs> here. <laughs> that's an understatement. Bu Buffalo needs help, but uh, they do. Don't, they don't have Jack Eichel anymore. They have Peyton Krebs as the centerman, but I have them taking Matthews of. Matthew Savoy. Yeah, that's what Which, I was gonna think as well. High point getting WHL player there, center. Right? I mean, I mean, yeah. Ninety points in sixty-five games played. I'm just, yeah, you know, sense. he could, he could go higher as well. Like that's four points below Shane Wright. I mean, exactly. You know, I don't know like points this, aren't everything in these leagues, but like, but no, he he is pretty impressive. This guy and like having a center that can put that amount of points at a young age as well. I know it's just the. It's just the uh, WHL that he's in, right? He's with, with the Winnipeg Ice. But I think um, at age 18, he's a right-handed right five foot nine centerman, 175 pounds, and getting that many points uh, close to Shane Wright, which is the consensus, consensus, uh, you know, first overall pick. Like everyone's, he, he's pretty similar. Yeah. Like, like I don't see much difference, right? Um, but I, I think you point know, wise, Buffalo, yeah. Right. Like he could definitely be a guy there in Buffalo that they need, like playing with Dylan Cousins, like Matthews. Do you Savoy, think he's Dylan so far Cousins. down the list? Do you think he's so far down the list because he's undersized? Probably. That's For definitely why. Man. Well, you see Cole Caulfield, right? He was definitely picked lower, and so was Alex Turcott, but they're great players. Yeah, but, yeah I I just I just think that like centermen undersized centerman it's it's harder for I think GMs to wrap their head around. Uh like a undersized winger, like sure, you know, fast, speedy get around yeah. the board stuff like that but like a centerman generally you want your centerman to be big but yeah but maybe that's why he's so far down right no for sure that it, it could be that it's definitely why i mean it sucks because i think he's a great player and i don't think he you know you shouldn't really judge him on that i mean it's yeah, like, I, I, like, I, I, like it's a faster paced nhl it's not really yeah i mean yes there's physicality but it's more faster pace you know what i mean and he'll grow i mean like you said, another good young player to add in there with Owen Power and uh, Dylan Cousins, right? right? So, is Dylan Cous yeah. Cousins a centerman? No, I think he he's right winger centerman. I think he played yeah. both. And then they also have Peyton Krebs. I mean, building a great core there. They still have Casey yep. Middlestat. He could be something, but you never know. Darlene. <clears throat> Darlene, right? Like, man, it's good core there. Good core. So, yeah, I'd like to see that. Building something there. Maybe um, one day, Buffalo. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we go to number 10, the Anaheim Ducks. I think they just add to their forward core here. I mean, you already have Jamie Drysdale, which is like gonna be your top D. Um, I, I, they could use um, some more prospect defenseman, but I think they're gonna take Connor Geeky here. I think Connor Geeky is a really good player. Um, a a lot of pick. Yeah, a lot of people have him rated lower, but this guy has 70 points in 63 games played too. And he played with the Winnipeg Ice, which seems to be a good team in the WHL. I just oh. think, um, he's a great player. I, he's six foot four too. Like this is a huge kid, right? Like he can definitely be. I mean, you said. Like, him with could, Mason McTavish. Those are two big guys, right? Right. Like imagine that line. That like that's a see like the win Stanley Cups too. You got to have that grit. You got to have that big uh, uh, forward core, right? Dude, are you basically telling me that Connor Geeky is like Getzlaff two point oh? He, I am exactly saying that. Just not bald. You know what I mean? 
Just but, not bald. I mean, guess Laugh wasn't bald right away, but maybe Counter Geeky. Was. Pretty quick. Pretty quick. Yeah, but I think you know they won't like regret drafting him. I mean, he's he's like on Bob McKenzie's list here. He's number thirteen, but on my list he'll be number ten. And I think you know Ducks will definitely benefit from that. They're gonna have a great forward core. Man, McTavish, Connor Geeky, um, Trevor Zegris, uh, Sam Steele, Troy Terry. Like, they're going to have a great future. Jamie Drysdale. They have John Gibson still, you know. And they have another goaltender, Lucas Daw still. I think they have a bright, bright future. And I think They're also in on Chikrin. They can yeah. get that Chikrin deal. Oh, I man. Mean, like, they're, they're set. They're set if serious. they can do that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I move on to number 11 here. I see this is where like it's kind of getting a little confusing. Um, but I think I went a little off the board. No, okay, this guy's rated a number on a number twelve on Bob McKenzie's list, but I have number number eleven, so just one spot ahead uh, ahead of uh, what Bob McKenzie said for the San Jose Sharks at the eleven spot. I have Pavel Mintyukov. I <laughs> Mintyukov. Mintyukov. I know I probably butchered that, but he is. I'm just here to help you pronounce names. Yeah, Bryce is here. He's my translator. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but because um, English is hard, he is 18, so he's a little older. Um, well, Mitnikov is in English, so it's, you know I don't blame. Yeah, him. yeah, no. Um, but uh, yeah, he's 18. He's a little older, but he's six foot one, and he's 185 pounds, and he is playing in the you know the OHL with uh, with the Spirit, and I, you know I think he's in the right spot here. I think having a huge defenseman like that would be good for the San Jose Sharks. I think they could add on their defense core. They do already have like four, uh, forward prospects like Eklund, right? I think growing on that defense core for their prospects, like they, they're obviously in the rebuild, right? Like they, they're, I think Vlasic's gonna be gone soon. Burns is gonna be gone soon. They're gonna have to like rebuild that, right? So they're gonna, they're, they're gonna they have Merkley right now, Ryan Merkley, which is a great defenseman prospect that they got later in the draft. And adding this guy can definitely help with their team. And this is a big defenseman, and like having a big solid defenseman like that back there would be great. So, and he has he's almost a point per game player in the OHL, and at his size, that's pretty impressive, right? Sixty two points in sixty seven games played. I think the Sharks would definitely benefit from having a, a good another great defensive prospect like that. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I mean, you also have Kevin Korchinski, who uh, has three more points in the same amount of games. But Min yeah. Minnikov scores goals. Exactly, and having a defenseman that can score goals is it's it, it's a nice thing, right? And like, yeah, especially at a size. Do you think a defenseman at that yeah. size wouldn't score size a lot of goals? and scoring? Yeah, yeah, that that GMs are gonna like that, right? And so I just think um, that's just gonna be a bonus for them, right? I, I think that's why he's gonna be picked by the Sharks there at number eleven, and then we go to the Columbus Blue Jackets at number twelve here. Um, I, this guy's rated lower in other lists, but I have Danila Yurov. Um, he's playing in the KHL right now. It's, okay. It says he has two point, no, zero points in 21 games played. I thought he was a lot better. Hey. Korchinski? No, Danila Yurov. I thought he played for a different team. Oh, he played in the, in the KHL. Yeah, he plays in the KHL. Um, he played, he played in the MHL as well this year. He played, okay. he had 36 points in 23 games. The MHL is like the AHL for the KHL. I see, okay, so he, that's so 36 that's 36 points in 23 games. Yeah, but he, they have him listed as a KHLer because he did play 21 games, but zero I points. See. Probably see. a very sheltered role. Um, KHL tends to not play young guys uh, yeah. that that much. That the, They usually hide them. Yeah, I don't know exactly. if they want to hide them from the the prying eyes of the NHL or if they just they could if they be, just right? believe in if they just believe in a more veteran philosophy over there. But but yeah, well, I mean I've he played twenty one games. This guy. Yeah, thirty six points in the MHL. I mean that's I think the MHL is a men's league, isn't it, or is it a youth league? I don't know. I never even heard of that know. league. I'm not gonna lie, but I've heard like he's on he's number fourteen on Bob McKenzie's list, so like I don't have him rate him that that much higher than he actually is supposed to go. But I think Danilo Yurov is definitely gonna go in that position there. Um, Columbus could use it. That's another nice prospect of, uh, forward for, you know, Columbus. And they're already getting, like in my in my opinion, they're gonna get uh, 
Jerichek is that they already have a prospect defenseman, so why not get a prospect forward when you when you have like another pick in the first round here? And so I think that would benefit them just getting another a forward there. And he's a right winger too, so I think he'll definitely benefit them as well doing that. And I think he can score goals as well. So I have him going number 12. And number 13, I heard a lot, this guy can go as high as number five, I've heard some, some places. Uh, but Marco Casper to the New York Islanders at number 13, just because um, I've heard really good things about this guy. Yeah, he's an Austrian player. And a lot of Austrian players are coming up, you know what I mean? In the SHL, he's 11 points in 46 games played. He's a centerman as well, which, I mean, centermen are nice to get. And he is 18, 6 foot 2. Um, I've heard good things about him. And he is rated... Yeah, he's Another all over Vanek, the board. Maybe. Yeah, he's all over the board. V Vanek, Vanek was Austrian. I mean, Vanek was a goal scorer. This guy looks yeah. goal scorer. Vanek There's was a big guy too. Yeah, exactly. And like they can definitely, you know, he's playing the SHL and that's a good league to play in the start. He's already playing with men. And um, I think the Islanders can definitely benefit getting another prospect for their forward core. Yeah. I think their defense yeah. core is pretty much set right now, even though they lost Devin Tays to the Devon Tays to the, the Colorado Avalanche a while ago. But they have Pelic and everything like that. So they don't really need and Pulak, they don't need the defense, but they they do re really need to build their forward core because a lot of the older guys are getting older, right? They're not going to be there forever, and I don't think they're making the playoffs anytime soon. Um, so getting Marco Casper would definitely be a good uh, call for them, I think, for another good centerman as well. You know, uh, any team can use a nice center prospect, I think, and you can even play him on the wing if you really wanted to. Um, and then they go to pause one sec. Yeah, my TV just turned on. Don't stop anything. One sec. My bad, bro. You just gotta right. put that out. No, you're good. You're good. Um, All right. So, uh, where am I? Yeah, can I, I had one guy, but I'm gonna change it. Um, so the next pick here I have for the Winnipeg Jets at number 14th overall. I have them picking Frank Nazar, and this is a guy that's been, you know, talked a bit like different positions as well. He has 70 points in, um, what is it? He has 70 points in 56, in 56 games, games. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's also from the USDP. Um, you know, a lot of good players come from there and he's committed to Michigan. It looks like Frank yep. Nazar the third. <laughs> so the, the third. that's pretty, imagine having that player on your team. I think he would be pretty cool to have. He's ranked as high as five. So, um, he can definitely go to different places. He does put up points and this is another guy that can definitely slip up if they wanted to. But I think at number 14 for Winnipeg, they they are getting into that rebuild because they are having talks with trading Mark Shifley. So getting a guy like Frank Nazar could definitely, you know, turn them around um, for the future because I think that's what they're trying to build for. And this guy can play center or right wing. So having a di diverse player like that can definitely help with your team. And, you know, he'd play either on the center or right wing. I can definitely see that happening. And he, he does get a lot of points on the team. And I don't think it's hard for the the U.S. Uh, National Development Program to do that. But um, I definitely see him going there or even higher, honestly, like that. But I have him on the, you know, the 14 pick for Winnipeg. And then we can move on to number 15. And I think you're going to like this one, Bryce. I, I hope you like this one. Um, this guy has definitely dropped. He was definitely supposed to be rated higher. For the 15th overall pick, the Vancouver Canucks pick Brad Lambert. And I, I think he's been struggling for the past, uh, you know, like for the past little bit. But in the World Juniors, I did see some brilliance from him. I thought he was a really great player. He definitely put up points. And, I, you know, he is playing in a men's league, which is pretty hard to do, especially at his age. He's Finnish and Canadian. So Brad Lambert, if it sounded a little weird, that's why. He's an 03, so he's a little older, but he's a late birthday in December. And he's 18 years old. Um, he's six foot, 183 pounds. He can play center or right wing. And, you know, uh, it's, uh, I think he's a good pick. I, like, I, look, tell me what you think. This is your team, like Vancouver. Do you he see makes him sense. Playing? He, he makes sense for Rutherford because Rutherford um, and Alvin, I know that their philosophy has always been fast. 
players. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Lambert has elite skating. Um, I don't really take into account like him struggling against men as a serious thing, but at the same time, you know, you have guys who are not struggling against men at his age, right? So like, what's yeah. the difference there? Why is Brad Lambert struggling? I, I don't really know why. Um, I, I know that the Canucks need defense, um, but they don't really like any of the guys defensemen around them because they're all left-handed yeah um i i know that like there's been guy like owen pickering is is a guy that people have talked him, about yeah. for the canucks um but other than that i mean besides uh, nemec and um Juracek, i mean pretty much everybody in the first round is left-handed so yeah i mean maybe maybe uh rutherford elects to to go for that forward in the draft and then and then maybe acquires a defenseman by a trade whether that's you know through miller or whatever but oh, I, I mean yeah. i i think brad lambert could be like like if the canucks pick him i'll be excited because it's like you know this guy was rated so highly and then he fell and i mean we've had success with that before right because like vancouver picked hot coals in after pot coals you know fell from th third overall right Pod yep. coals was top three in the draft for a long time and then he slipped Number five. And, you know, Bre what was he? Number five, tenth. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, we took him tenth, and he was you know for a long time rated to be in the top three. So, I don't mind taking. That's a different management group, but like I don't mind taking guys who are like who have slipped because a lot of the times they slip for stupid reasons, right? It's like all yeah. recency bias with these guys. But no, I like I like the idea of Brad Lambert, but the Canucks do need defensemen, right? So I don't know. I don't know what the management thinks about Mitnikov or, or like Korchinski's a guy you've left hanging. Korchinski, honestly, yeah, I do, I have left him hanging, and like we're talking about number sixteen here, um, and that is the Buffalo Sabres pick. So this is where they can get their defenseman, right? Yeah, another defenseman for their core. I a, think. a point getting defenseman too to play with exactly. power. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, if they can get this guy, Korchinski, definitely come up and play on the team. I, I don't know if he's um, he's playing with Seattle. How old is he? He's 18. He can definitely come play for the, the squad if they really wanted him to, or they can play him. I mean, that's a great pick for them. Yeah. You can do so many things with that guy. Like Korchinski, he definitely... So for the Buffalo Sabres at number 16, I will definitely put um, Kevin Korchinski, but he's definitely a guy that can go up, right? He has 65 points in 67 games. That'd be a good but, draft for Buffalo, you know, to get Savoy and then Korchinski. I mean, right? that's, that's that's good. That that would make sense for them to do. Um, he's a left-handed defenseman, but that's okay. I mean, they have Deline, right? That's, uh, and I think Owen True. Power, is Owen Power, Power right-handed or no? I don't know. I know Dalene. I know Dalene is. I know Dalene is. So, I mean, they can definitely go for him. I mean, and... that's pr that's three pretty sick defensemen. If Korchinski pans out, I mean, Power, right. Korchinski, and Dalene. I mean, oh boy, that's strong. I mean, exactly, and you and definitely get him at a good price there. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the top sixteen right there. And I I, think... I have one more question. I have one more yeah, question. Yeah. Do you think yeah. Do you think there's any possibility that a goaltender sneaks into the first round, anywhere? No, I think no. In this draft, it, it looks like the next goaltender is Maxime Arefiev, or I, he's a Russian goaltender. Arefiev, Arefiev, yeah. Arefiev. Looks like I, I looks he's rated number. Doesn't even say. Um, but he's he's rated lower. Um, I, they definitely could wait. They can definitely wait for a goaltender. If someone needs a goaltender, they can wait till later round, because that's usually the trend with the goaltenders. It's very rare that goaltenders do come up. I mean, another guy, Tyler Brennan, he's supposed to be a good pick, but he's like way down the list. So um, they can definitely, you know, go for a goaltender. If they, if you need a goaltender, you go down to the later rounds. I don't think any goaltenders slip into, you know, the, the final. I mean, usually, usually one, well, not usually, I'd say about 50% of the time a goaltender gets, you get a goal, one goaltender in the first round somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Um, but like like you said, you can get a goaltender, you know, late. I mean, Demko was a second overall or second round pick. I mean, you exactly. Know. It, usually, second round is where they land. You know what I mean? Because yeah. The, the, like, be okay, the best goalie. Yeah, yeah. The best goalie will often go in the second round. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
Um, another guy too that I know was rated pretty highly earlier in the year was Ivan uh, Mirosh Miroshchenko. Yeah, I um, I would I would take a chance on him. I think he was what he. Okay, here's the thing though. Okay, so the reason why suffers... Hodg Hodgkin's lymphoma. He yeah. was supposed to. He was rated in the top ten for a while, I think, and then he got diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I think he could possibly be a guy that a team says we don't care about the disease we think he's you know gonna make a full recovery yes. and he's top 10 talent and we're gonna take him i was you know, honestly gonna suggest that i was gonna like say like for one of the higher picks that like someone takes a chance on him and it has come out that he can like he he's gonna be cleared for like you know training camp right he's allowed to play or like yeah. allowed to participate in training camp so and if he was rated that high but low like it's just his his value doesn't decrease with that i don't think he i think he's still a great hockey player doesn't it doesn't they, they well like they just said there's risk there's risk factors when picking him there's a risk because, factor there because yeah. he can get sick he can get sick again or even more sick and you know like injuries he, he might not be the same i don't know like it, that's i think that's the questions around him nothing against him as a hockey player like he's an amazing hockey player but i think it sucks that he was uh you know diagnosed with this and um and i think that you know he got robbed of like being a top 10 pick because of this stupid disease but he, I think he'll come back stronger, and it, it possibly that he could come up to a top ten pick or a top fifteen at least. You know what I mean? And I don't think they'll do anything. It don't, like Bob McKenzie has him at nineteen, and I think that's not bad at all either, right? Like a team's gonna get a steal. one more guy. One more guy I want to mention, and it's just because yeah. of his name, uh, Jimmy Snuggerud. Snuggerud. Where is he? Where is, oh, okay, Se number seventeenth. Jimmy Snuggerud. And he's not even. He doesn't even have a position. He's just F for forward. Actually. So he goes anywhere. It just, it just says that F. That's does that mean any all three plays all three positions? I mean, only crap. So, I guess so. Man, that's that's actually pretty nice to have. I'd I'd take him. All right, guys. I don't want Lambert anymore. I want Jimmy Snugger Red. There's there's a lot of guys here from the U.S. national program that have like a shit ton of points. I think, I think it's it's similar. Well, I mean, you look at the OHL and the WHL, right? I mean, how many times do you have high scoring prospects? in those leagues and yep. then they come into the nhl and it's just it doesn't translate well like, i just think have, like arthur Kaliev, well, like he's pick, picked in the second round in previous years and um he, he had like 100 points in the ohl right it's so, an age thing it's yeah. an age thing i i think it's because you can be 19 in that league playing against 16 year olds and there's a massive physical difference between a 19 and a 16 year old oh for sure so for sure um, but yeah, that's that's our draft selections for this year's draft, uh, the 2022 NHL entry draft in Montreal, and uh, I pretty pretty much agreed on everything, Bryce, and but except like the first overall pick there. Yeah, I mean, oh. like I said, I don't have a ton of knowledge about about a lot of the deeper guys here, just because uh, just because I, to me, I don't know this season there this year. There's just like so many names that are just like I can't I can't keep track of them. I, yeah I, oh no man there's it, it's a deep draft too so like there's a lot of names to remember so, it's also all jumbled up too right because a lot of these players you know maybe didn't get the, the looks they needed because of covid delays and stuff like that right so like th there's a yeah. potential for a lot of boom bust like yep. you could get big booms late in the first because they just weren't scouted enough and you could get big busts in the top too because you know those top guys weren't weren't there exactly no i i definitely agree with you man um but yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what happens to in the draft tomorrow. Definitely have this video out before then. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. A lot of guys might slip. A lot of guys might not. It might go exactly. We'll do a review. It. We'll compare. We'll, we'll, compare we'll do picks. a review after. Yeah, because yeah. there's definitely gonna be wrong wrong selections here. But you know, you never know. Imagine we'll, you get it all right. That would be insane. I should win something. We should win something if we, we got I it agree. all right there. Should but um, yeah, imagine. Imagine we win like a million dollars. That'd be oh, great. man. Hi, Ron Podcast huh. Studio. Buy one, you know? Own company. Yeah, I'm down. Let's all right. It. Sounds good, man. Um, but yeah, check us out on all our socials. We link below TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Um, check out our um, podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I'll, I'll upload this on, on, app on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. I think it'd be nice to listen to. I think we, you know, talked like a normal conversation, like a normal podcast. Um, I'll have this up on YouTube for the draft like i said so don't forget to like share and subscribe much appreciated and you know just continue to show your support um that's all from me brace how about you
that's it for me. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the draft tomorrow. It's one of my favorite things to watch. Uh, you know, hopefully the Canucks take somebody good here. Hopefully, hopefully we get a steal. Steal would be nice. Where did the Leafs right. pick? <laughs> 25. So that is looking like... Who do you think the Leafs take there? <sighs> uh, that's a question. I defenseman? Mean, do they need Probably. a defenseman anymore? I mean, there's a I'd guy named so. Ryan Chelsley. Ch and Chesley, and yeah, but Pickering's there. Fisher. Yeah, Maddie. I've heard, there. I've heard Pickering. I've heard Pickering that they're interested in. So yeah, I mean, Pick I've heard Pickering as high as 15 as well. I don't know where they're yeah. going. I mean, I mean, it's gonna be a good question. They can go with a guy like Nathan Gotcher. I, I've heard that. Or I don't even know that's how you say his name, but that's uh, Gotcher. I've heard. Yeah, I think Gauthier? he's a, No, it's got he's you know QMJ. It's Gotcher yeah. for sure. Gotcher, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. So I mean, it's tough to tell what they're gonna go for. I mean, I don't even know what they need. They just need to win. Then we need to win the first round. That's what they need. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for, thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for listening. If you're listening on it on the podcast, uh, Apple Spot, uh, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and like I said, like, share, subscribe, and we appreciate uh, you guys watching. So you guys have a good one, and we'll see you after the draft. See you guys in the next episode. Peace.